passing of the peace time. So um, you're, you're going to notice as we as we get to uh, uh, the sermon time that, that I had a sermon prepared. I'm going to talk about that. I had a sermon prepared, and I, I chucked that to the side. And I'm going to be I'm going to be talking about um, fear today. I think that's an appropriate topic. So um, isn't it? So welcome to worship this morning. And some announcements. Um, we're back on track with bells and choir this week. We've got um, Lent lunches. You can see the information about that. We're planning at this point anyway. We're planning a game night or game day after church on March 29th, and we're gonna play games. And okay, we've got in here lunch to benefit Misty, and we already benefited Misty, so we already did well with that. But we're gonna be playing games and eating. So um, don't forget about cereal, especially as um, times are tumultuous. Cereal is a great option for those. Individuals that are ser served at food pantry, and I know that we are. There was no cereal over there this morning when this started, so that's how well we are doing. I'm not sure what number we're at, but we're we're rocking. Diane, you got a number? 30 this last week, so plus 11, 41. Okay, Diane has a better memory than I. She says 41 plus this. Way to go, way to go, Diane. Thank you. Are there other are there other announcements this morning? PW this week. Yes, PW this week. Don't forget about that. We have, does someone still have the book, MIA? Is someone still missing the book? Yes, we found one. We found a PW book, so if you do not have your PW book, you're going to come be Tuesday or whatever, and you're going to want to write a book, is, so call the, call the office. Are there other announcements this morning? All right, good. Let's stand and sing joyfully together. <laughs>
seated. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. Surely God is in this place and calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. God's love is for you and for all people everywhere. That we may share God's love and life. May we be renewed in the refreshing spirit of the living Christ. The living Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Please pray with me. Creating God, we gather in your name to worship you. We give thanks that there is a small spark of God within us. Kindle that small spark into a flame of love and service. Sustaining God, we gather in your name to worship you. We celebrate the loving presence of God in our life. May God's loving presence be a strong influence in our life. Nurturing God, we gather in your name to worship you. We rejoice that God teaches us about love and forgiveness. As we grow in faith, trust, and love for God, may our worship, witness, and service bring honor to God's holy name. Amen. Now, we have number 320, Release the Cross of Jesus. Church prepares to observe the Lord's passion and resurrection. We 
examine ourselves as we remember the suffering and sacrifice of Jesus on our behalf. In this season of repentance and fasting, we come to terms with our mortality and need for God's mercy. The candles on this cross represent Jesus' life and ministry. Each week, we extinguish another candle, remembering how we, the human race, rejected Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We extinguish the third candle as we remember the people who rebuke the blind beggar and seek to prevent Jesus from healing him. Jesus announced earlier that his mission included the recovery of sight to the blind. The people close to Jesus, his disciples, were supposed to participate in his mission. They should bring the blind beggar to him. Instead, the people close to Jesus try to silence the blind man who desperately needs his help. We don't know the disciples' motivation in this account, but we know we can be just like them. How have you ignored those who are most hurting? How have you neglected your mission to announce the good news to the kingdom of God? When have you refused to bring your neighbors to Jesus? Thankfully, Jesus will not be stopped. He will reach out and bring healing despite our neglect and refusals. Who in your life needs to know Jesus' grace and healing? How might you bring them to meet Jesus? Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we believe in, that you are incredibly on the move, that you are bringing health and wholeness to a hurting world. We know that you call us to reach out to others as well, but sometimes we refuse. We refuse to see those who need you. We refuse to slow down in the midst of our busy lives. We refuse to minister to those who hurt. Forgive us, Lord. We thank you that you will not be stopped. You will heal and save no matter what. Help us remember how you sought us out. Thank you for the people you use to bring us to you. Please help us to be more faithful to the mission you gave us. Give us compassion and boldness. Give us the grace to repent so that we might seek first your good, true, and peaceful kingdom. Amen. The Call to Confession in the season of Lent, we are invited to consider how we live as followers of Christ, to look at our decisions and our actions straight on, and to hold them up to the example of Christ, and to make amends. In this time of silence and in our prayer together, let us look at our lives. We pray first in silence. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped up in our own concerns. We have gone along with evil, with pride, with quarreling, and decisiveness. Holy God, help us to face up to ourselves so that as you move toward us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we said it before, but it, it bears saying again, you know what, Jesus did not wait for us to get ourselves together. He went and he died on the cross. He forgave us our sins before we even knew who he was. Today, live in that forgiveness and share that forgiveness with a broken world. Now, let's stand up like we are and we'll all give way to everybody. Then we can check out who's here. <laughs>
other national disasters and tragedies. All right, kids, are you ready?
you can feel, can you not feel a general sense of, if not from yourself, a general sense of anxiety? Now, as I said, after watching what's going on, after praying about all this happening, I realized I had to check, we'll see where this goes, but we'll, we'll check this week's sermon, and we, we, need to, we need to talk about fear. Because you know what? In, in these kinds of times, Christians, is, Christians need to turn to our God and His precious word. And today I'm going to share with you my favorite psalms. And I'm so glad that Donna is here this morning. Because this is one of the, one of the psalms that I, that I read at, at Leonard's service. And it, I think it's incredibly applicable today. Listen, listen, friends, to the word of the Lord. This is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her. At break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, listen to this. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Now, we have no idea what was happening to the writer of Psalm 46, but what we do know was that this whole world was shaking. What does it say? The mountains are falling into the sea. The earth is giving way. The waters roar and foam, the nations are in an uproar. This is bad, right? Now, how many of us understand that? Yes. Now, I think we were already, this is Karen's perspective here, but I think we were already living in very anxious times anyway. And I think the world seems that much shakier. What do we do? Now, our culture tells us to what? Panic, right? I'm supposed to panic. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to buy up lots of supplies. Lots of cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, bottled water, and especially what? <laughs> Say it all together. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. Yes. Now, we're supposed to all start panicking, right? Is that not what we're supposed to do? And we're supposed to try and get tested for the virus. We're, we're supposed to start to be very afraid of what's coming. We're supposed to ramp up our already anxious selves even more. Now, I'm going to admit that I think it's natural to be scared. It's natural to feel helpless. It's natural to fear losing control, okay? I personally, this is again Karen's perspective here, I think that's why so much toilet paper can be purchased. We want to control at least a little part of our lives. I can know that I have toilet paper. Now, I'm a toilet paper hoarder anyway, okay? So if I get the little six rolls, I go to the store anyway, okay? I'm okay. Now, everything is moving around us, and we feel the world is turning upside down. But we have a different perspective. Because for us Christians, in the midst of all this fear and panic, there's still God. It says the city of God, it talks about the city of God. It's a space and a time where God's righteousness rules. Do you believe that God is surprised by what is happening? Do you think you went, oh my, oh my goodness, what just happened? It's all off plan. No, he's not saying that. Now, everything else in life may be tottering, but the place where God is present, it's not going to be moved. And, and it says, when the storm rages, God is our refuge. A refuge is a safe place from danger or storms. When a tornado blows by, we take refuge in a safe place. These poor people in Tennessee, if you listen to any of that, it's heartbreaking to hear some of those things. Of them taking safe places and it literally blowing everything away. In fact, some of them losing family members, right? And hopefully, though, if everything, if you're in a good spot, everything you may own may blow away, but if you're in a safe place, you're going to be secure. And in the same way, when we put our trust in God, He is going to keep us safe from the storms and fears of life. And there is no safer spot than a life secured and sheltered by the presence of God. 
Now, I shared this story at, at Leonard's funeral, and it's, it's a great one. Before 9-11, maybe you've heard this. The mayor of New York City had his bomb shelter in the basement of the World Trade Center Building 7. Okay? The shelter obviously became useless beneath the millions of tons of rubble. And we know the trade towers themselves were, now they were supposedly built, did you know this, to withstand a plane crash? But the architect said the problem was, in essence, they didn't factor in, of course, the unexpected intense heat of the burning fuel or, frankly, the well-placed locations of where the plane struck the towers. I believe that reminds us that even the safest places we humans can construct, they fail. But putting our trust in Jesus, we know that while storms are going to come, that we will be safe no matter what happens. Now, you know, I was thinking this week about how many of you, you already know what it's like when the earth under your feet shifts. Haven't you had that happen? I've had the incredible privilege, it is a privilege, to walk alongside many of you as you've lost spouses, you've lost moms and dads, you've lost siblings, you've even lost children. Okay. And I believe that I've been blessed to be the presence of God with, with you when death comes to your door. I've been there when you found out you had cancer, when you had Alzheimer's, when other things happened. Those are incredibly hard. And we would all agree that when those things happen, our lives are never the same again. But for anybody who knows and loves Jesus Christ, you know the only refuge you've got is Jesus. If I had a dollar for every time one of you said to me, I don't know what I would have done without my faith after this happened. Haven't you heard your friends, your friends here, your friends in other churches, your, your Christian friends say that? Because in a changing world, God is the constant. God's not going to change. God will always love you. God will always be there when, that, when everything else is gone. Now, I want to be very clear. I am not suggesting we do nothing. Because again, if you know me, you know I love a plan. I am a list maker. Someday when I pass away, people are going to find scraps of paper everywhere of notes of things I was going to do. Sometimes I can't even remember what's on my own list. I look at it and go, why does this make any sense anymore? I'm a, I'm a planner. Now, I think our nation, our state, our community, our hospital, and our church ought to make a plan. And I read an article this week that said as a part of our mission in this world, the church can be a strong agent to prevent sickness and protect the vulnerable. I think our church is an integral part of this community. I think we ought to do anything we can to help. And I've been praying that as many, have, how many of you, you don't have to confess, you can think to yourself, how many of you found out that you don't really wash for 20 seconds? <laughs> do you want to look at anybody and just go, whoa. But what if we spent those 20 seconds as we repetitively wash our hands praying? Okay? What if we stayed home when we were sick? I pray that all illnesses will decrease all the way around, including the coronavirus. Now, I myself need to apologize, honestly, to all of you for coming a few weeks ago. I did not have the coronavirus, but I did have bronchitis. I said to myself, why were you here? You should have gone home. Isn't that something we should do when we're sick? We have to stay home. We have to wash our hands. And I want you to know that the section and myself are going to be meeting after church today to come up with a plan. We're not going to panic, but we're going to make a plan. Making plans is good. But in the face of our nation's fear, we've got to stand firm in what we know about God and His Word. In the face of fear, we have to call an audible. Now, I bet some of you know what an audible is, don't you? Some of you know that I'm a servant leader in our local community Bible study. Community Bible study is a, it's a worldwide organization whose mission it is to make disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ in our community through caring and deaf Bible study available to people. And our executive director, Kim Carr, recently put out a video where she talked about the coronavirus and our need as Christians to call out an audible. You football fans know what this means. We need Dan here today. I know there are others of you that know what this means. So, when they go out on the field, they've got a plan, right? But they, it's when the quarterback changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Okay, they get out there, they see something to defense, and they think, okay, the play we were going to run isn't going to work. So he changes the play to a play that's going to work against the defense the other team is playing. Now, Kim Carr suggests we call an audible 
4610. Say that. 4610. Psalm 4610 says, Be still and know that I am God. Now, because of his faith, the writer of the psalm, even in the midst of his terror, was able to stand strong and hear the still, quiet voice of God. When, when the earth starts to shake, we realize our human limitations, don't you? I start to go, I start to all go, we don't have control. Right? Because we don't. And that's when we need to stop and listen. And God says to us, stop. Relax. Rest in me. I am your God. I will be your peace. When we start to panic, we can remember the great works that God has done, not only in the earth, but in our own lives. Now, I believe if any time of the year, it's, it's so interesting to me that this happens in the time of year, in the time during Lent. This is the time when we're contemplating the cross, we're contemplating the greatest thing that, that God ever did for us, and that sent his son, Jesus Christ. We know that through him, that death was not the end, and it's not the end for us. I talked last week about how when, when um, we accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, we're in paradise with him right now. And Jesus is with us right now, today. Now, I want to share with you some thoughts from a Christianity Today article by Ed Steitzer, titled Christians, This is Our Moment, A Call to Clarity and Mission. He says this, as our world is confronting their mortality, have you thought about that? Is that what some of this is? As our world is confronting its mortality, for some of them, the very first time, we have a choice to either place our faith in the hope of Christ or to mirror their fear born of a perishable hope. One tragic fact about our society is that we've made dealing with a crisis such as this virus significantly more difficult for our embrace of polarization and politi politization. That's a hard word to say. The problem with the rationing up of the culture wars in the past decade is that we've essentially treated one another as if we've had the play according to our cultural and political allegiances. And now when we need to work together, we have very little trust. Now again, I urge you to pray that while you're washing your hands, while you're making preparations, while you're watching the news, when you're out getting whatever it is that you need to get. I had a whole cart of groceries on Friday, and somebody said to me, oh my gosh, you've got a lot of food. And I'm like, my kids are home. It's spring break. Okay? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm not panicking, but I, I do have to have some food here, okay? I want you to pray for the people affected. I want you to pray for our leaders. I, I don't care what, you, you can think whatever you want about whoever you want. We're not talking about that, okay? I'm talking about praying for all of them. Pray for the people of our local hospital, for doctors, for nurses, administrators, for the office staff. For all those working at our hospital as plans are made and executed in the weeks ahead. I pray that you would pray for Christians around this country to rise up and to show the love of Jesus Christ in incredibly radical ways. I also encourage you to read the word. And I want you to choose, I want you to choose your own Bible. Maybe you like Psalm 4610. One of mine is this one. I'm going to read this one to you. This is one of my favorite ones too. This is Isaiah 43. Listen to this. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. That's Isaiah 43. Lent is a time for action. And here are some practical ways that, that Ed Seitzer suggests Christians can seek the mission of the gospel rather than, than to isolate themselves entirely. First, let's focus on the people who are vulnerable and particularly, that we're going to be particularly hit by the virus. We know that's older people. We know that's people with underlying health risks. How can we help them to prepare? Okay? Second, we've got to resist the bunker mentality, okay? That says, okay, it's all about me. Now, honestly, I think that's what we see when people are hoarding, when there's two people and you need 40 rolls of toilet paper, okay? I'm going to start timing. I was like, I wonder how long it does take one person to use one roll of toilet paper. But that bunker mentality, yeah. Do we need, again, do we need to listen to medical professionals? Yes. Do we need to stay home if we're sick? Yes. It's the best way to love people. But we've got to stop letting fear impact.
compel us to hoard what we can and to build walls to keep other people out. There was a story, I'm not going to go into this, there was a story about people who drove around and bought thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of hand sanitizers, masks, all this stuff so they could push the prices way up and make, I mean, exorbitant amounts of money on Amazon. Now, you, you, you think about that, find that article, interesting one, okay? Because while everyone else is thinking about what I have, the gospel says to us, we gotta care about what other others have. And I say, you know what, reach out to your neighbors. Maybe you don't know one of them. I think, imagine if millions of Christians would check on their neighbors this week to see how they're prepared, rather than just rushing to prepare themselves. Now, I also want to boldly suggest that many, you know that the, the care centers are closed, Arlington is closed, that I would boldly suggest that we take the time to call or drop a card to our church folks at the local care centers. You've got a list. Did you see that list in your, in your bulletin here? You've got one. Okay, if you don't have a stamp, you call me. I will bring you a stamp. And I've done, done, laid out some cards out there if you want a card. Drop one out. We did that this morning in Sunday school, didn't we? Nayali and Tony. Didn't we? We wrote some cards to people in the care centers, didn't we? And we're going to mail those. Um, maybe there's some other folks. Uh, I know that Jan uh, Black posted that her mother, Alice, maybe you probably know her, that's in the Stanford Care Center, that she uh, urged, she said to Jan, that she would love that the churches are praying for them. Let's pray for them. Let's send them a card. You know, um, our session is going to be sending out, Sally's taking care of that, is sending out um, Easter cards. So I encourage you to send send them a card, call them, let them know that we're, we're still here. And you know what, maybe they even be, think, wow, I'm hearing even more from the church than I usually, usually am. You know, none of us, in the end, none of us wants to face this. None of us wants to be sick with it. None of us wants to see our family, our friends sick. And God forbid, die from the coronavirus. It's frightening. But the virus is a chance for the body of Christ, the church as a whole, to rise up and to live out our faith. Now, I believe that when the chips are down, I pray that the church will lead the way in serving and caring for others in the moments of crisis. This is the time for us to rest securely in God. This is the time for us to rise up and be the church. The seminary I graduated from, the University of Dubuque, posted this. Listen to this. What if done, what, sorry, what if done by a church in the midst of a pandemic would cause neighbors to be stunned by their kindness, courage, generosity, faith, hope, and love? Do that. Today I call an audible. 4610. I hope when you get home you're going to think of that number. 4610, 4610. If you get home and you can't remember the psalm part, you can text me for free. I won't give you a hard time, okay? Say so now, 46 what? It's like 46, what is that, okay? Be still, friends, and know that I am God. Let's pray. God, you're with us. What an incredible, incredible thing in the midst of challenging times to know that you, you're, never, you're never away from us. And even if we feel that you're far away, Lord, that is a feeling, but it's not the truth. We know, Lord, that you and your presence are right here with us. So we pray that we would call out an audible. And we pray that as we are calm, as we are a non-anxious presence, that we would be of great help to other people. We pray, Lord, that as this church, as the church, we would rise up and we would do your bidding. Thank you, Lord, for being our constant, our refuge, and our all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Friends, as we come to a time of prayer this morning, are there other prayer requests to share this morning? A joy, um, Sarah and George, um, Sarah Hayes and George Ramos got married yesterday in our church. It was beautiful, so a big congratulations to them and to Peggy and Warren. Are there others this morning? Yes, Mary.
Harvard gave a beautiful speech all about pi and its numbers, and it was quite elegant. Eloquence. Oh, yeah, somebody else had their hand raised. Sally, did you want to say something? No, that was that board. Okay, I apologize. That's, that's yeah, my error. No, I just, I wanted people to hear it. Is there anyone else this morning? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Holy One, I thank you. I thank you that you are the God that is always with us. You're the God who sees us. You are the God who is Emmanuel, who the God, God with us. You are holy and just. You are loving and kind. You are full of mercy and grace. You are slow to anger, and you are abundant in your compassion for us. Lord, we thank you that everything that happens, even when when things seem chaotic, everything that happens here is under your watchful eye. You're not off somewhere else. You're not just letting the world run while you're busy, but you are right here with us, and everything is part of your plan and your purpose, and we thank you for that. Lord, Lord we do lift up to you all those who are suffering with the coronavirus. We pray for those who know they have it, especially for the critically ill. We we pray for those who do not yet know they have it. We pray, Lord, for testing. We pray for the medical professionals, both in our in our local hospital here and in hospitals and places of, of medical care around the world. And we pray that you would be with them and that they would have the supplies and the things that they need. We pray, Lord, once again, that, that you would cause us not to be anxious, that we would be concerned, that we would take preparations, that we would make a plan, that we would not be scared, Lord, because we know that we're right here with you. I pray, Lord, once again, that the church would rise up and we would there would be many acts of mercy and love done that are so extraordinary that we know they're only due and from you. And thank you, we thank you for that. Lord, we lift up to you our friends around the world, and we know that it's especially volatile in other places, and we lift up to you Joel and Kristen McCutcheon and Sophie and Kati and ask your blessing upon them. Um, we ask that you with them as they continue to minister to missionaries as they provide biblical counseling. We lift up to you Kusui schools and eye servants. We lift up to you um, uh, Belize. Uh, that trip will not be happening this year for Warren, Peggy, and, and Misty, but we, we lift up to you all, all the friends we, that they have in Belize and, and pray your blessings upon them. Um, we, we just thank you and praise you that we're part of this mission. Lord, we pray that as, as things progress here, we pray, we thank you for the generous gifts to Christ covered. We know that there will be many in need, and again, we pray that we would help meet that need. Lord, we lift up to you our, our older friends in the care centers, and we pray for all of them. And we ask that they would know that we are praying for them, that they would feel your presence. We pray that they would feel comfort, that they would stay well, and just lift them all up to you. Um, we thank you, especially for our friends in care centers. We lift up to you, Marianne and Odette, for Pat and Dolores, for Marilyn and Velma. For Merlin and Shirley and Bud and for others more. And we just put them safely and securely in your hands, Lord. Lord, as we pray for all those in need, we think of those who are suffering from cancer. We think of Doug and Rhonda, for Bob, for Paul, for Rudy. And we pray for good, we thank you and praise you for the good news for Rudy. We just lift up to you um, all those who are suffering with illness. And we think of those who are struggling with depression, Alzheimer's, ALS who are bipolar, who are suffering, who are perhaps in silence. And we pray that, that as our, our medical system becomes um, challenged with the, the folks having coronavirus, that the other, the other people who are needing medical care will get good medical care too, and that the system will not, not be overwhelmed. Lord, we thank you and, and praise you for the gift of a marriage. And we thank you for Sarah and George, and we ask for you to bless them, for that you truly to be the the third cord in their marriage, and for them to have many, many happy, happy, wonderful years together. Lord, we thank you, and we thank you that we can be here together today, and we lift up all these prayers in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
Sing 705, it is well with my soul. 